innovations in more traditional sectors, such as transportation, infrastructure development, geospatial mapping, manufacturing, and retail. Uh, the challenges and difficulties we face in politics around the world and domestically are, are potentially the biggest opportunity for innovation, you know, right. for, for troubleshooting and for problem solving. I passionately believe that business should be more than profitable. I believe business and innovation should make a lasting and positive impact. I believe that the best run businesses and the truly sustainable innovation are socially responsible businesses. I believe we are living in an era where the customer finally comes ahead of shareholder interest. We could achieve the competitiveness in human capacity and technology in Indonesia with to be believe very important to support the knowledge-based economic growth and to materialize or to make it happen. Intelligence is what you do when you don't know what to do, when neither innateness nor learning has prepared you for a particular situation. Meaning that in general, intelligence or exhibiting intelligent behavior is doing the right thing at the right time in order to ensure your survival. The art of the possible is there. But are we going to stop right there? No, absolutely not. We're not going to stop at spending $8 per person on research and development. We're going to stop when we're spending on a per capita basis on research more than our neighbors are spending, more than $1,600 that the Singaporeans are spending. Mm. But actually, if you go talk to the teenagers or the screenagers, how they search for things is they almost always go to YouTube, right? They learn almost everything by watching videos mm. rather than reading articles. Okay. And so that's another great reason why video content creation has a lot of potential. It's a particularly good time to build infrastructure because the money is cheap, commodities are cheap, so you don't have to spend a lot of money on oil and gas and steel and everything else that goes into infrastructure. Labor is available, and there's quite a bit of slack in the global supply chain. The new paradigm basically changing the way the government is actually looking at delivering. So in this case, we uh, try to, uh, to give some uh, analysis comparing the LCS with uh, securitization. With the LCS, the asset is still under the government or under uh, the uh, state-owned enterprise. And of course, in the LCS scheme, we try to convince to the Ministry of Transportation the benefit of the LCS to be applied in the, um, the best uh, airport in Indonesia. Accountability is the more important issue rather than uh, you know, whether it's state-owned enterprise or not. So you know, from, if we're realistic, state-owned enterprises can perform incredibly well. Paradigma baru is basically saying that if a uh, project can be delivered by the private sector, is to uh, let the private uh, sector to do that. And secondly, if not, then uh, through the public-private partnership. There's probably two core issues. One is stability, political stability. If you have governments changing, then you have real challenges and there's little certainty. And the second point is actually quite similar, is regulatory stability. There's a much by the younger generation, but the, what we also find out is that people more and more young generation are concerned with the uh, water and sanitation, which is also a quite interesting uh, uh, phenomena, not only in the uh, big cities, but we also did a uh, survey outside Jakarta and outside Java. What is important for Indonesia is to create more entrepreneurs, whether it is brick and mortar entrepreneurs or a digital entrepreneurs. It doesn't matter for the government. As long as the entrepreneurs can create jobs. We launched TAG. TAG is essentially a web-based um, strategy game prototype that we launched and um, 
it essentially is a game that allow, that combines both offline and online gameplay components, allowing users to earn as they play. How we do this is by leveraging the hybrid intelligence core engine that we have created to stabilize and maintain the in-game economy. Whether or not Indonesia can become a burgeoning tech industry, absolutely. Um, there's really no other option. Uh, <laughs> there's no other option. It's, people discuss about technological revolution as if it's a choice. It's, it's not. You're either ahead of it or you're behind it. In my own com country, I just went through the most disruptive possible experience when someone used marketing techniques to supplant one of the most uh, famous and probably capable politicians in the United States, but that didn't matter because the consumer responded to the marketing message of Donald Trump. The business that trades on the fact that a point in real time they know more than the customer will actually, actually revise their position entirely. So I, I think the, the application of the world that we live in right now is really um, having a very quick adaptability to change, understanding the technology advances, um, how social media, how digitization, how Internet of Things, all these huge trends, how they are causing, I mean, tremendous opportunities for players um, in the market. So it could be done in so many different ways and there's no one route to entrepreneurship or innovation in that way or you know meeting the next revolution and I think we should be cognizant of that because um, what I don't want to be an impediment is that not just like people uh, you know uh, thinking uh, that it's very difficult uh, we did a campaign for a week and we got a lot of response of the ideas of uh, healthier to make healthier Indonesia. So it's, it's an amazing competition that includes the youth inside it, so we should do more like this. The Indonesia Economic Forum is to inspire, uh, motivate, and in fact, you know, get uh, young Indonesians engaged in the process of innovation.